Adobe is finally showing off Photoshop on the iPad at their Adobe Max conference. They've also unveiled a new painting app called Project Gemini. Let's check it all out. Most of the information I'm gathering here I gathered from an article that there's over on The Verge and I'm going to link that down below. They also put together a little demo video that's worth checking out as well. One thing that is clear from all the things that I have read is that Photoshop for the iPad has been under development for a very long time and since it's such a huge program that is not a surprise at all. They are expecting to unleash this thing on the world next year in 2019. Now over the summer I made a video and I was a little bit skeptical, maybe a lot skeptical of, about what they were actually going to release, mostly because uh, Adobe has done two separate iterations of Photoshop apps for the iPad already. The first were a whole bunch of micro apps that came out for the iPhone and the iPad that all did various things, like took one feature from Photoshop, and the second iteration was Adobe Sketch, which out, came out just a couple years ago. And so yeah, I, understandably, I was thinking, is this really going to be real Photoshop this time, or is this just another Photoshop branded app for the iPad? But good news, we get real Photoshop this time. Did you edit in a celebration noise there? No, the other celebration noise. One thing you should be aware of, and it's not too surprising if you follow software development, is not every feature that you know and love is going to make it into this very first iteration of Photoshop. And mainly in this very first iteration, they're going to be focusing on what they call compositing, which is photo editing, things like that, also probably more graphical design things. Uh, probably less on the illustration side of things. So if they don't get your favorite feature into the first iteration, I wouldn't panic and I, I wouldn't like get too freaked out about that and say, oh, this is a terrible piece of software right off the bat. I've gotten the impression with other Adobe apps, especially their mobile apps, that they just kind of are throwing things against the wall and trying to see what sticks. I get a totally different impression with this, with the size and the scope of what they're rolling out here. It really feels like this is part of a giant initiative that they're working on and they're taking an iterative approach, which makes sense. Instead of waking, making you wait another two or three years to use the whole thing, hopefully they're going to be rolling out new features features to it uh, and trying to bulk it up over time. Now one thing that the Verge article really focuses on is this idea of cloud PSD files. That is the save file when you save a Photoshop document. This makes a lot of sense. One of the things I really love about Affinity Designers, I've hooked it up to iCloud. When I save a file there, it automatically goes to my desktop. I can open up the same file, work on it. It is very seamless. And that's something the iPad has always been a little bit clunky about. A lot of apps have gotten better about it. I know Procreate can now save Photoshop files. I can open those up on the desktop, but there's an extra step or two in there in between. Looking at the screens and the interface of Photoshop, it really is a rethinking. And in general, that's something that Photoshop has really needed, not just for an iPad version, but just a general rethinking of the product. I think if they just took the whole thing and pushed it onto the iPad, it just wouldn't be a very good experience. Uh, I, I love applications like Clip Studio. Clip Studio moved their entire application to the iPad. A lot of people love it, but for me, I still tend to go back to Procreate because there's just so much interface there in Clip Studio, and it's all, also very small. I, I think I would prefer a traditional iPad experience. So I'm really glad that Photoshop is rethinking that from the ground up. Now, what about price? They haven't set in stone how they're gonna sell this yet. If you have a Creative Cloud subscription, you're going to get it automatically. They haven't said if they're going to sell it separately or not. I wouldn't hold my breath for a one-time purchase. If they do sell it separately, it's still gonna be subscription-based. I think that's something that Adobe has, has done and that ship has sailed and that is just the world that we live in now. One thing that caught my attention that I noticed in this article and I noticed in the Bloomberg article that appeared over the summer when they first announced this is that this initiative sounds a lot bigger than just, hey, let's roll this thing out on the iPad. It almost sounds to me like this is the first iteration of a version of Photoshop, a brand new version of Photoshop that will become the default standard Photoshop that once they get it set on the iPad that they might be rolling off into like onto the Mac, onto the PC, maybe even onto Android or Chromebooks. So, so so here's what's caught my attention. This line from the article especially stood out to me. Photoshop has stopped being a desktop product and has become a system. It's the word system that really stuck with me. So a little bit of background. They talked to the product manager at Adobe. There's a little audio clip on the Verge's website. And in it, uh, he, he talks about Adobe Lightroom and some of the changes they've made in the last year or two to that. Adobe Lightroom was one of those products that's been around forever and, and like Photoshop has a lot packed into it. Uh, photographers have built their entire businesses around this thing and their workflows around this and so they didn't want to ruin that so what they did is they have 
Classic, which they have over here, and they're probably not going to be updating a lot. They're just going to keep it working for a long, long time. And they rolled out a brand new version, Lightroom CC, with everything that they wanted to put in, in a new version with a better workflow and, and a newer, more modern sensibility to it. And in the interview, Scott Belsey talked about that as a preface to talking about Adobe Photoshop. And it kind of makes sense. What if you wanted to reboot Photoshop? This would be the time to do it. Every year, Photoshop adds more features to it. Every year, it gets more bloated. This idea of a fresh start with a smoother and easier to use interface does make a lot of sense. And making it work well on a touch interface first and then rolling it backwards onto the desktop makes a ton of sense, especially on Windows where they're moving to these more touch-based interfaces anyway. And this is backed up by some of the things that were written in the Bloomberg article over the summer. Scott Belsey, Adobe's Chief Product Officer for Creative Cloud, confirmed that the company is working on a new cross-platform iteration of Photoshop and other applications. And it's this term cross-platform or the term system that keeps popping up. This whole idea that this isn't just an iPad app that they're pushing out, but they are working on something much, much bigger. And I'm personally really curious to see where Photoshop goes over the next couple of years. The other thing is, is that there is a new drawing program called Project Gemini. Adobe announced it, it's on their website. Here's how they describe it. Project Gemini is a new painting and drawing app for pen touch devices. It is designed for professional quality work, but easy enough for anyone to use. Oh, I don't know. Looking at the only two screenshots that we really have to go off of here, it, it really looks like they've rebranded branded Photoshop sketch. It uses Kyle's brushes. That's something that they've talked about. That's kind of cool. It It's another painting app. It looks like, I don't know, it looks like Photoshop sketch, but, but kind of rebranded. I think a rebranding of Photoshop sketch isn't a bad idea, but since they've just announced Photoshop for the iPad, I would really rather have them just pile all of this stuff in there. They don't need an app to compete with Procreate. They need to be Adobe. They have to have the biggest, the best app, the big professional app. They don't need to be turning out these tiny little things. I've kind of always felt that way about Adobe. I wish that they'd just focus more energy there, but I guess if you're looking for a drawing or painting app, they are working on yet another one. So anyway, that's big news. Are you excited about Photoshop on the iPad? Are you still not willing to pay for a subscription? Let me know down below in the comment section. That is all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in a couple of days.